On today's episode, Joey Anderson is officially coming back to Chicago next season. I'll talk about why this was a no-brainer for Kyle Davidson, and I'll also get into some updates on a few other Hawks pending free agents. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome on in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Friday, June 23rd. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And also just a reminder that you could subscribe to the YouTube channel for 100% for free, or you can also check out Lockdown Blackhawks wherever you may be listening to your podcast. That's 100% for free as well, which seems like a pretty good bargain to me. Make sure to go and do that real quick. I would greatly appreciate all the support. And also that way you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. I also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Game Time. Make sure to go and download the Game Time app right now to get all the cheapest tickets for the sports, music, and theater events near you. All right. What's up, everyone? Good morning. Good afternoon. Whenever you're tuning into this, thank you all, as always, for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day. I hope everyone's Friday is treating them well so far here today. And we got lots of Blackhawks updates to talk about on today's show here, folks. I know we're now just five days away from the 2023 NHL draft, five days away from Connor Bedard coming home to sweet home Chicago. Couldn't be any more excited, but we actually have a ton of Blackhawks free agent news to get into here today as there's been uh, lots of tidbits and rumors thrown out there in the hockey universe over the last 24 hours or so. But what I actually wanted to start today's episode with is the only concrete news that we have from the bunch, which is Joey Anderson officially coming back to Chicago next season and kind of funny timing on the announcement of this as well, at least for me and the show because Joey Anderson was actually my final season recap segment of the off season that I had on Monday, which also happened to be his 25th birthday. And then of course, just a few days later, uh, the Blackhawks announced that he has signed a one year two way contract through the end of next season that carries a cap hit of $800,000 at the NHL level and just short of $500,000 at the AHL level. But after seeing what Anderson did in his 24-game stint with the Blackhawks after being acquired uh, from the Toronto Maple Leafs. At the time, it just kind of seemed like a throw-in a little bit uh, for the Sam Lafferty and the Jake McCabe trade, but the Hawks are hoping that they may have another Sam Lafferty situation on their hands here with Joey Anderson because he looked really sharp in that small stint. Four goals, two assists for six points in 24 games. Looked really solid, mostly on that line with uh, Boris Kachuk and Jujar Kara. They didn't really do anything fancy, but they worked really well as a unit, uh, fought hard in puck battles and along the boards, were grinding it up, good on the four check together, and you know wound up being uh, one of the most effective, if not the most effective trio for the Blackhawks towards the end of the season. And for Anderson himself, he was a huge part of their success, looked really sharp, was really tenacious on the forecheck, and as I mentioned, fit in well with Kachuk and Kara, two other grinders. And I also saw this stat from, uh, shout out to Ben Pope from the Chicago Sun-Times, a reoccurring guest here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, but I saw this stat in Ben's column that he wrote yesterday about Anderson signing. He had a 48.3 scoring chance ratio at five on five with the Blackhawks. That ranks second among all skaters in those final 24 games. So I would certainly say that he's deserving of another look in Chicago here next season. And he's actually someone that the Blackhawks have apparently had their eyes on for quite some time going back before they acquired him from the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, with Joey Anderson being one of 
several University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldog products in the Blackhawks organization. Uh, I guess assistant coach Derek Plant actually uh, shared some good words about Joey Anderson and how, you know, he, he likes his game and thinks if he gets an opportunity, you know, he, he's going to make the most of it. And, you know, that's exactly what happened. So um, the Blackhawks wanted him well before they did. And in those 24 games, I think he uh, executed, you know, probably better than they had imagined, more than just a throw in. The Blackhawks wanted Joey Anderson. So it seemed random at the time, but Kyle Davidson keeps, there, there's something to be said about these, small types of moves that he's making because obviously the return for Jake McCabe and Sam Lafferty that was most notable to us Blackhawks fans was that first round pick for McCabe, the second round pick for Lafferty. But Joey Anderson, we might have something here in Chicago. And uh, I definitely think there's something to be said about Kyle Davidson attacking these types of players, maybe guys who are hungry to get an opportunity and have, you know, flashed some upside at times, but just haven't really gotten a chance or haven't been in the line of consistency or put in a spot to have some success. And with where the Blackhawks are at in their rebuild, they can afford to give those type of guys an opportunity, a chance to show themselves. And I thought Joey Anderson certainly made the most of that chance last year. And uh, I'm glad to see that he's officially coming to the Blackhawks next season. I don't think it's the craziest thing in the world to say, um, that he could be on the precipice of a Sam Lafferty-esque breakout next season. I fully expect him to be in a bottom six role to open up the season for the Blackhawks. And he's still, you know, only 25 years old, despite having bounced around with a couple of teams. And like I said, being up and down from the NHL level to the AHL level, I think all of that is going to help mold Joey Anderson into the player he wants to be and to help him take advantage of this opportunity that he's going to get here in Chicago. So I'm super pumped to have Joey Anderson back. There was actually someone on Twitter who was like, this is a little bit of a weird thing to be pumped about. And I'm like, what? Like, this is a guy who 24, 25 years old, never really gotten a chance to prove himself. Again, the Blackhawks and Kyle Davidson have done a good job of recognizing those players and giving them an opportunity here in Chicago. Um, 25 years old, Works hard, good four checker, does all the little things right. And he was also, of course, a guest on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast not all that long ago. A super good dude. Um, so, yeah, I will never not be pumped about those guys getting an opportunity. And I think for many different reasons, Anderson's play, the situation that the Blackhawks are in right now, the $800,000 cap hit, which is super cheap. For many different reasons, it only made sense for Joey Anderson to sign this one-year deal and to come back with the Chicago Blackhawks next season. All right, coming up in just a moment here, Hawks fans, don't go anywhere as we also have an update on another hungry player that Kyle Davidson took a chance on at last year's trade deadline. But first, I need to talk to you all about game time, which is the perfect place for last minute ticket deals because buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. And game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music, and theater events near you. And Game Time is actually something, an app that I've been using since I was back in high school. And true story, I'm going to the United States Jamaica Gold Cup game tonight. Where did I purchase my tickets? It was on Game Time. That's not, that's the truth of the matter. I'm not just saying this because they're an advertisement for a show. I've been using them for a long time. Uh, and it's always just been the simple and cheapest way for me to purchase my tickets. I also love how they send me images of my seats and they provide event cancellation protection for every event. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and make sure to use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL in all caps for $20 off your first purchase. Again, all you have to do is create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDONNHL in all caps for $20 off your first purchase at Game Time. Last minute ticket deals, lowest price guaranteed, Game Time. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Real quick, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers right now. I actually haven't checked today, but um, if all went well, I believe I have crossed the 800 subscriber plateau. I greatly appreciate all the support out there. But I know with the buzz around the Blackhawks right now, them getting Connor Bedard in just five days, I'm having a lot of new viewers, a lot of new 
uh, listeners to the podcast and on the YouTube channel. So make sure if you haven't done so already to go and smash that subscribe button. If you're listening to the audio version and you like what you're hearing, please make sure to go and leave me a review, preferably a good one. Those are always fun and I always appreciate them a ton. And also go and follow Lockdown Blackhawks on Instagram as well. You're going to want to do that to be part of the giveaway that I'm having. And I'll tell you more about that after our next ad break. But getting back into the good stuff here, folks, segment two, yesterday, Scott Powers of The Athletic, a.k.a. the best in the biz here in Chicago, in my opinion, dropped a huge column sharing uh, a bunch of updates on several Blackhawks players, mostly pending unrestricted or restricted free agents. And perhaps the most noteworthy bit of that column was his update on Pending restricted free agent Anders Bjork, who the Blackhawks also acquired at the 2023 NHL trade deadline. They got him from the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for our boy, good old future considerations. Pour one out for good old considerations, man. Just keeps bouncing around teams, never getting an opportunity. I thought they were going to give him a chance here in Chicago. It made too much sense. Uh, but winds up going back to Buffalo, man. Maybe he'll stick in the lineup one of these days. But on a serious note, Andres Bjork was uh, a fifth-round pick back in the t- 2014 NHL draft, spent the past handful of years playing for uh, the Boston Bruins and the Buffalo Sabres, his best season in the NHL coming back in 2019-20, where he tallied 19 points, nine goals, and 10 assists in 58 games. But Uh, kind of struggled the following year during the COVID-shortened 2021 campaign. And then over the last two seasons, getting a new opportunity with the Buffalo Sabres just kind of had a hard time being productive and then being a a regular in the everyday lineup for the Sabres. And then this most recent season, he actually wound up playing just one game at the NHL level before getting traded to Chicago and spent basically the entire season playing for the Rochester Americans of the AHL, but um, obviously it just wasn't working out for him in Buffalo. And with the Blackhawks being the position they were in there in the second half, trading away Max Domi, trading away Sam Lafferty, trading away Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves obviously stepped away for a good amount of time. So you know who, you know which team out there could certainly use some players to stick in their lineup for the second half. That's right, the Chicago Blackhawks. And this was just another classic no-risk type of trade. For GM Kyle Davidson, he gave up nothing in return. If Bjork, they don't like what he sees, he's a pending restricted free agent, didn't cost them anything. And if he winds up playing well, then they could, um, you know, go on to potentially extend him. And in those uh, 13 games that he got with the Blackhawks after they acquired him, I thought Anders Bjork looked really good, flashed some upside, flashed some speed. I believe he had a three point period during that stretch as well and uh, wound up finishing the year on a four game point streak before ultimately suffering an unfortunate season-ending injury, which really sucked because he was looking good there before uh, getting getting hurt. But all in all, wound up tallying two goals and six assists for uh, eight points in those 13 games with the Blackhawks. So considering how solid he was, again, I know how small of a sample size it was. 13 games is really nothing, but considering how well he played in the upside that he did clearly flash. I was a little surprised to hear from Scott Powers' article that the Blackhawks aren't planning to give Anders Bjork a qualifying offer here before July 1st, which of course would then uh, let him become an unrestricted free agent at that point. But Scott Powers did make sure to, to point out that this doesn't necessarily mean the Blackhawks aren't going to be re-signing Bjork, but they aren't going to be doing it at his qualifying offer price of $1.8 million. And I found this just a little bit weird, again, given that Bjork, I know, small sample size, but eight points in 13 games, finishes on a four-game point streak, showing his impact. I was a little shocked and very surprised to hear that they weren't going to give him a qualifying offer. And considering the position they're in right now, um, I think two things are happening here, Blackhawks fans. Something's smelling a little bit fishy to me. I think two things could possibly be going on right now. The first is that the Blackhawks, they obviously have the money to re-sign Andres Bjork. They have the most money out of any team in the NHL right now. And despite that, we've heard they're not going to be all that active in free agency this year. They don't want to be dishing out long-term deals and having guys signed on for probably more than two years because they want that flexibility with all these youngsters coming up and their ELCs are going to get burned. They want to have the flexibility to be able to sign those guys, but they still have to reach the salary cap floor. Right. And 
I thought signing Andrews Bjork at his $1.8 million qualifying offer, like almost made too much sense. So I do wonder if the Blackhawks, if general manager Kyle Davidson and Andrews Bjork could have like a little bit of a, of a verbal agreement going on and maybe they're talking about signing for more than that $1.8 million AAV, because quite honestly, I, I don't think that I don't know why they wouldn't be giving him another chance with the position that they're in the money that they need to be spending. And based on again, how well Anders Bjork played in those 13 games. So I think that's one thing that could be happening because uh, not wanting to do it at his $1.8 million qualifying offer just doesn't make sense to me or for whatever reason, they just don't want Anders Bjork back. But quite honestly, I think that would be a little bit of a, a mistake. And Kyle Davidson really hasn't made mistakes so far in his time as general manager. So I do wonder if there is something going on right now behind closed doors. Um, and I do get that, you know, I, I broke down the Blackhawks outlook at the forward group a week, uh, maybe two weeks ago here on the show. And I've talked about it a lot. There aren't a whole lot of open spaces, particularly at any position, honestly, on defense in the forward group, there's a couple of open spots, but it's not like the Blackhawks have glaring holes that they need to fill in their lineup. No, they have a lot of guys on the roster still at this point. So um, maybe that's something that came into play here with Anders Bjork if they don't want him back. But I, I certainly think that he's worth another look, at least in my book. And I want to hear what all you uh, fans out here think about this matter right now. Go and comment down below if you agree with me. If you think Anders Bjork is worthy of another opportunity or if you disagree with me on this matter, I want to know what everyone out there is thinking because I'm quite honestly a little bit confused about hearing this from Scott Powers. Um, so let me know what you think about the Anders Bjork situation down below in the comment section right now. But personally, I think those are the two things that are going on right now. There's only uh, two options that could be happening. And I wouldn't be surprised if um, the first with the Blackhawks possibly talking to Bjork behind closed doors, I wouldn't rule that out uh, as of this point just yet. All right. There's the latest on pending restricted free agent Anders Bjork. Coming up in just a moment, I'll also get into some updates on defensemen Caleb Jones and Ian Mitchell from Scott Powers' article as well. But first, I need to talk to you all about bird dogs. If you're looking for fit, comfort, and versatility, then look no further than bird dogs. And I personally love their stretchy fabric that makes me extra comfortable in their shorts and pants. And they also give me the freedom I need to wear them wherever, whether that's on the golf course or to a work meeting or even when I'm just casually hanging out with friends. And for me personally, I always hate having to dress up formal for certain events. I hate feeling stiff and just not comfortable, but I never have that issue when I'm wearing bird dogs. They make it so easy. So make sure to go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NHL. And when you enter the promo code lockdown NHL in all caps, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every single order. Again, you just have to use the promo code locked on NHL to get a free tumbler with every order. Bird dogs, the comfiest shorts and pants in the game. All right, before I wrap up today's show, I do want to let all you listeners know about the giveaway that I'm doing here on Locked On Blackhawks right now. Help me out. I'm on the quest to reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And when I do reach my goal, I'll be having a giveaway here on the channel. And all you need to do to enter first subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube, then follow Locked On Blackhawks on Instagram and send me a DM to Locked On Blackhawks, just a little screenshot that shows that you're subscribed to the channel. That way I can have proof. And on my Instagram channel, I actually just posted pictures of uh, a few things that will be involved in the giveaway. I'm still going to be probably adding one item or two here in the next couple of weeks until I do reach a thousand subscribers. Uh, and the winner, the lucky winner will be able to select one item of their choosing. So make sure to go and do that real fast to help grow the channel. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And you'll also have a chance to win some cool free Blackhawks stuff. All right. Segment three powers also mentioned in his article that he hasn't really heard uh, anything definitive on any of the other Blackhawks pending restricted free agents, but um, he did 
report that neither Ian Mitchell nor Caleb Jones at this point in time, of course, two pending restricted free agent defensemen, he did hear that neither of them is aware of what's going on with their future at this point in time, which, you know, with July 1st coming up, it's a little over a week away. Um, That's certainly a little bit curious and probably goes to show that the Blackhawks are kind of on the fence here about each of those two guys, probably more so for Caleb Jones, if I had to guess. But interestingly enough, for Caleb Jones, we heard from Elliot Friedman on his 32 Thoughts podcast from Wednesday say that there are some rumblings in Chicago the Blackhawks aren't going to qualify defenseman Caleb Jones ahead of the July 1st deadline. And I posted about this on Twitter and said, you know, with Wyatt Kaiser, Isaac Phillips, and Alex Vlasic all expected to be in the NHL and to make that leap next season, along with Jared Tenorti coming back on that one-year contract. It is exactly, um, it's, it's pretty hard to see exactly where Caleb Jones is going to be fitting into the mix next season. Now, I also want to say that there is certainly a chance that two of those three young defensemen that I just mentioned make the NHL roster out of camp and One of them winds up starting the year down in Rockford. I don't think that's the craziest thing to say. I certainly do think that's in the cards, despite the expectation for those three guys. And if that does wind up happening, then, you know, maybe that opens up a spot for Caleb Jones. He or Jared Tenorti in all likelihood would probably be, or maybe even Nikita Zaitsev if they wind up keeping him around. Um, One of those guys would probably serve as the seventh defenseman. In my opinion, it would probably be uh, Zaitsev or, uh, Jared Tenorti over Caleb Jones. So that that is still an opportunity, but regardless, considering all those guys are coming up, plus you have Kevin Korchinski, Nolan Allen, Ethan Del Mastro, three left-handed defensemen as well. Looking forward, it is tough to see where exactly is Caleb Jones going to slate into this defensive group. And even when you just take Caleb Jones out of this conversation and look at all the left-handed defensemen the Blackhawks have coming up these next couple of years, it almost feels like while all of them are surely not going to hit, that would be freaking awesome. But the chances that happen are unlikely. It does feel like one of them is going to have to get moved at some point in time. And it does become a numbers game at some point. So maybe that would be the reasoning as to why Caleb Jones isn't coming back. But for me personally, um, I know there's uh, a lot of hate out there on social media for Caleb Jones, but to me, for a guy who's only 26 years old, does some things that the Blackhawks don't have on their blue line well. He is a good skater in transition, has good breakout passes, got better at standing up his own blue line. And I thought most nights down the second half of the season after the Blackhawks traded away Jake McCabe and Caleb got that opportunity up on the top pairing with his brother Seth, I thought most nights they were really solid and the analytics backed that up when I broke down the season recaps for both Seth and Caleb, that combination worked really well together. And I personally would be leaning towards giving, giving Caleb Jones another opportunity. I I think he's deserving of that, but at the same time, I get that tough decisions are going to have to be made. And um, at some point you're going to have to wonder, you're going to have to prioritize the future of this blue line. So it's a, it's an interesting interesting conversation, and it makes sense as to why the Blackhawks haven't notified Caleb because maybe they don't know what they're doing yet at this point either. But it was curious to hear from Elliot Friedman that there are at least rubble, rumblings that Caleb Jones might not be coming back to the Blackhawks next season. Um, but I also just kind of wonder how Seth is going to feel about this as well, considering you know say what you will about Seth Jones's play and the contract. I don't really care, but. Throw that all to the side. He got the short end of the stick on this rebuild here in Chicago. He wanted to come to Chicago because of what they were doing when Stan Bowman was still the general manager, uh, signing Mark andre Fleury, making one final run at it. And then, unfortunately, it went worse than anyone planned, and that's what led to the Blackhawks having to go back in a full-scale rebuild. But that certainly wasn't what Seth Jones thought he was signing up for when he uh, waived his no-movement clause to get traded here to the Blackhawks. And with his, with rumors that his little brother isn't going to be coming back, you know, you got to wonder how, how he's going to be feeling about that. A guy who didn't sign up for this rebuild, but is 
looked upon by the front office and by the coaching staff and by all the players to be a leader through these next couple of years. I'm sure it's easier to do that, knowing that the Blackhawks have Connor Bedard and help is on the way, but it still, you know, has to be upsetting to Seth if Caleb winds up not coming back and getting another opportunity with the Blackhawks and letting his brother walk in free agency. But I will say again, at the end of the day, now I'm at the end of the day, though, I know that this is a business and it is tough to see him uh, as part of the future with all the left-handed defensemen that are coming up in the system these next few years. So wouldn't be surprised to see Caleb Jones not get signed again. I personally would be wanting to have him back, but it's a business decision. And it sounds like the Blackhawks are at least considering not giving Caleb Jones a qualifying offer for Ian Mitchell, though, a a much simpler conversation. I didn't want to forget about him. Listen, if the Blackhawks, If they're going to be playing Ian Mitchell every day at the NHL level next year, that's the only way they should even be thinking about bringing him back at this point in time because he's voiced his frustrations with not getting an opportunity. It seemed like all things were shaping up for him to finally get that last year, and then in the first half, his appearances were few and far between. They were spotty, not getting any consistent action, and... You know, for a new GM in place, Kyle Davidson obviously didn't draft Ian Mitchell. It it certainly felt like he was cutting ties and that this was kind of the end of this chance here in Chicago. And Ian Mitchell, whether or not, you know, the Blackhawks are right about him, whether or not he's going to be a good NHL defenseman, he should be deserving of getting another opportunity if you're not going to provide it here in Chicago. And With Nikita Zaitsev not expected to be bought out, there's kind of been some rumors about that in the past week as well, and that deadline's coming up here in six days, I believe. So with the Blackhawks not having bought out Zaitsev at this point, that kind of solidifies the right side at the NHL level with Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, and Nikita Zaitsev. There's just no spot for Ian Mitchell, so I I don't see why the Blackhawks would be considering bringing him back, especially, like I said, with the word out there that Um, They might not be buying out Zaitsev. Where's the spot for Ian Mitchell? Are you really going to send him back down to Rockford? I don't think that's the best thing for him at this point. And I also don't think it's the best thing for this organization, keeping him around when there's just more names being added to the prospect pool year after year. Do the right thing here, Kyle Davidson. If you're not going to give Mitchell an everyday opportunity in the NHL, as it so appears, then let him become an unrestricted free agent and choose where he wants to go in free agency. All right, I think that is going to wrap up Friday, June 23rd's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all again for tuning into the show, and make sure to go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube or to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now wherever you may be listening to your podcast, and that way you can get the latest episode as soon as it becomes available each and every day. As always, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, and yes, there is going to be an episode tomorrow. We're closing in on the NHL draft. I got a few prospects I still want to break down. Got to go over my final mock draft. So there will be an episode tomorrow. But until then, enjoy your weekend. Thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.